Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Frank Stamfel, who is going to help me look at the waiver wire as we head into week eight, looking toward the second half of the season, just a week or so away. And Frank, how'd your week seven go, bud? About as good as it could go as a David Johnson owner, Greg, and hopefully the waiver wire treats us better. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I didn't bet on the Chargers like some other people in this room. That's exactly where we're going to start, Frank, because you bet on the Chargers. I like the bet. And listen, you were an inch away several times from winning that bet, but you didn't. And one of the reasons you didn't was because of the start of Ryan Tannehill. The Titans benched Marcus Mariota. They started Ryan Tannehill, and all he did was produce fantasy points. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill was really impressive in his first start with the Tennessee Titans, completing 23 of 29 pass attempts, 312 yards, 10.8 yards per attempt. Really good numbers there. Two touchdowns, one inter interception. You'll take that. His weapons are solid across the board. Corey Davis has the pedigree, former first-round pick, former top-10 overall draft pick. We know that he can make plays. Marcus Mariota could just never get the ball in his hands. They also have A.J. Brown, who has made a lot of plays so far this season on limited targets. They bring in Adam Humphreys, who is a reliable slot receiver, a good possession receiver. John U. Smith starting to step up as well. So there are some weapons here for Ryan Tannehill to work with. And it's just a great matchup heading into week eight. The Tennessee Titans are home. They're going to be going up against the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Bucs are allowing the sixth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks this season. They are 25th in pass defense DVOA. And over the past month, they're allowing an average of 348 passing yards per game. 2.5 passing touchdowns per game. So this defense got off to a hot start under Todd Bowles, but they have really, really reverted back to where they've been in years past. So I think with the injuries to Patrick Mahomes and with Dak Prescott and Lamar Jackson on bye, you're going to be desperate for some quarterback play. I think Ryan Tannehill going up against the Tampa Bay Bucks is about as good as it's going to get. Listen, I get it. The, the trepidation, it's Ryan Tannehill, but he's not held down by your boy Adam Gase anymore, which means Tannehill could be good going forward. Well, I won't worry about that far forward. I just mean this week, as Frankie said, facing the Bucks in a prime matchup. But if you don't want Ryan Tannehill and you want to go in a different direction, you can go further than Derek Carr, who's had a really solid season despite the lack of weapons. It's been the Darren Waller show all season long, and that's worked out. But Derek Carr, in a good matchup, should produce. Derek Carr, certainly not a sexy pickup, but he did produce pretty well against a solid Green Bay Packers secondary this past week, 22 of 28, 293 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and a fumble loss. Hopefully, throughout the week, John Gruden can teach Derek Carr, you know, when, when you're running, you're trying to score a touchdown, do not reach that ball out. Do not fumble it into the end zone. But outside of that, he was pretty good against a solid Green Bay Packers secondary. Going up against the Houston Texans in Week 8 as well, they're allowing the 10th most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks so far this season. Jacoby Brissett just threw for 326 yards, and four touchdowns against this Houston, Houston Texans defense. The secondary specifically really, really banged up right now. Over the past three games, the Texans are allowing 310 passing yards per game. They've allowed at least three passing touchdowns in each of those games as well. I like Matthew Stafford and Ryan Tannehill a little bit more, but if you're scraping the bottom of the barrel, you're really desperate this week. Those guys are already owned or you get outbid, I think Derek Carr is a good backup option going up against this Houston Texans secondary, which is not a good one. A couple of streaming options out there at the quarterback spot. Derek Carr certainly fits the mold. Facing a bad defense, Carr, a solid option for you, and he's available in most leagues. Let's move on to the running back position, Frank, and that brings us to Detroit, who we know want to run the football. And that's why we really like Carrion Johnson, who had a really nice schedule coming up, second half of the year. Carrion Johnson left this game yesterday with a knee injury in the first quarter. I don't know exactly what his status is right now, but I do know that it was for Maryland Terrapin Ty Johnson that took over the majority of snaps. You did see J.D. McKissick in there on a few third downs. But it was Ty Johnson in the red zone. It was Ty Johnson almost always. He's out there on most waiver wires. He's going to cost you a pretty penny. Is he worth it? Ty Johnson is worth it, and I gather he's going to be 
the most sought after free agent on waiver wires this week. All we know as of right now is that Carrion Johnson is dealing with a knee injury, but he's dealt with knee injuries in the past as well. It limited him to only 10 games in his rookie season last year. So pay attention to the news on Carrion Johnson. But if you own Carrion and you don't own Ty Johnson, you're going to have to spend a decent amount of your fab. And I think it's worth it as well. We saw in week seven, Ty Johnson played 64% of the snaps for the Detroit Lions. He had 14 touches for 57 total yards, including two touches inside the 10-yard line. J.D. McKissick saw only seven touches on the field. He didn't see any of those inside of the 10-yard line either. And Ty Johnson, the pride of the University of Maryland, I'm sure Greg Sussman will let you know that, ran a 4.4540 coming out of Maryland, and he's 86 percentile in the speed score as well. So he tested well in the combine. I think that they really like this kid, Ty Johnson. They liked him enough to cut C.J. Anderson earlier on in the season as well. And he's going up against the Giants in week eight, who are allowing the 10th most fantasy points to opposing running backs so far this season. Chase Edmonds just had 150 total yards. Don't get me started on the Chase Edmonds thing as well, because this whole David Johnson, Arizona Cardinals, you know, being active and not playing. But that's another story. We'll save that for a little bit later on. Chase Edmonds had a monster game, 150 total yards. Three touchdowns. So I think if Carryon Johnson can't go uh, for that game in the foreseeable future, Ty Johnson is going to be in a really, really good spot. I think he's a top waiver wire ad this week, Greg. I totally agree. We wanted Ty Johnson on our teams earlier this year when Theo Riddick was cut because we thought he could have the third down role. He didn't. It was mostly all Carryon Johnson for all three downs. With Carryon Johnson out, they're going to rely on Ty Johnson for potentially for all three downs. If Carryon Johnson is out for any extended time, Ty Johnson maybe a huge waiver wire pickup. Frank alluded to it a moment ago, and that was what Chase Edmonds did yesterday. The Arizona Cardinals trolled the fantasy community by announcing David Johnson active, having him out there for their first play, and never seeing him again. Chase Edmonds was unbelievable, and it has David Johnson owners questioning what Chase Edmonds' role will be when Johnson is ultimately healthy. I don't have that answer yet, but I do know if DJ is not 100%, Chase Edmonds certainly Pick up the load. First and foremost, thanks for nothing, Arizona Cardinals. Absolutely nothing. You tell us David Johnson looks pretty good in warmups. He's going to play. He's active. He was active for three snaps. And Chase Edmonds plays 60 of 64 snaps. Good enough for 94% of the offensive snaps. And the Arizona Cardinals Twitter account had the audacity to tweet out afterwards, you should have started Chase Edmonds. Well, thanks for nothing, Arizona. But Chase Edmonds did perform really well in this extended opportunity 29 touches 150 total yards three touchdowns looked really good against the New York Giants I thought it was telling that all year David Johnson hasn't really been able to run well behind this Arizona Cardinals offensive line and Chase Edmonds looked really really good yesterday running the football we know David Johnson's a really good receiver he's had a lot of his fantasy production this year come in the past game he hasn't really been able to run well he's averaging just 3.9 yards per carry on the season but Chase Edmonds ran for 126 yards yesterday and he's averaging 5.6 yards per carry on the season so you know Greg alluded to this a little bit I think that even when David Johnson is good to go Chase Edmonds is going to have a role we know David Johnson really good receiver The Arizona Cardinals run four wide receiver sets. Who's to say that they're not going to use David Johnson as a slot receiver or line him up as an outside wide receiver and have these guys on the field together? Now, that's when David Johnson's healthy. As of now, we don't really know what the health status of David Johnson is. And given the fact that they're going to be working out Jay Ajayi and Spencer Ware, that tells me that it's not looking good for David Johnson right now. So heading into week eight, they're going up against the New Orleans Saints. They're big underdogs. The Saints are good against the run. But anytime you have an opportunity for a running back who's going to see 15-plus touches, which that would be the case if Dave Johnson is out again or limited, then Chase Edmonds is going to rank highly as a waiver wire option this week. And again, I think he's going to have a role even when David Johnson is back. Maybe like Jamal Williams has had with the Green Bay Packers. I think he has earned that. So he's not to the level of Ty Johnson, but a really, really good waiver wire ad in Chase Edmonds. It feels like we've been hearing about Chase Edmonds forever, and coming into this year, he only had two rushing touchdowns to his name. Coming out of yesterday, well, he had three in that game. That's how good he can be. This Arizona Cardinals offense is fast. You want these pieces. Chase Edmonds could be a dynamite if he's out there, and DJ is forced to miss any time. We open the show today, Frank, talking about Ryan Tannehill. Now let's talk about Ryan Tannehill's receivers, including Corey Davis. Davis, well, he's been a fantasy enigma since coming into the league where he could have a game like he did yesterday and the next week come out and have a 3-for-30. 
Do you believe it will be better days ahead consistently for him? I do. Finally, the Titans have a quarterback that can get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. I never thought that I would be saying that about Ryan Tannehill, but he is the savior right now for the Tennessee Titans because that's exactly what he did. He got the ball in the hands of Corey Davis and A.J. Brown and Adam Humphreys. Corey Davis made the most of his opportunities. He had seven targets in Week 7 against the Chargers, had six catches for 80 yards, 23% of the target share. That target share number is the highest for any single game for Corey Davis so far this season. He also accounted for 27% of their air yards as well. And heading into Week 8, Corey Davis is going up against the Tampa Bay Bucks. This is a matchup that we want to target with wide receivers and quarterbacks. Right now, the Tampa Bay Bucks are allowing the second most fantasy points to the position, and they've allowed five touchdowns over the past three games to opposing wide receivers. We know Corey Davis has the side size, he has the speed, he has the talent, he has the pedigree. He just needed somebody that can get him the ball consistently and give him targets, and I believe that Ryan Tannehill can be that quarterback. So maybe if it's only just for Week 8, that's fine. But I think that he can build off of this performance. Really, really good matchup going up against the Tampa Bay Bucks. I like Corey Davis as the top wide receiver ad this week. Corey Davis has had consistency issues forever. But much of that may be attributed to Mar Marcus Mariota. Now that Tannehill's here, maybe it's different. Picking him up and finding out certainly seems to be worth it. When the Houston Texans acquired Kenny Stills, I didn't really think much of it. And then Frank pointed out to me, well, look at their other wide receivers. They're always hurt. It's Will Fuller, and it's Kiki QT. At some point, they're going to be banged up, and you're going to want to use Kenny Stills. That point is now. Will Fuller left this game early yesterday, and Kenny Stills was a major part of the offensive game plan. We don't expect Fuller to be available next week for the Texans, which means you may want to pick up Stills and start him. Yeah, Kenny Stills is going to be in a really good spot here. First game back from injury, had four catches for 105 yards on five targets and Will Fuller left that game early as you mentioned Greg dealing with a hamstring injury he's dealt with so many hamstring injuries throughout his career he had a torn ACL last year as well you know Kiki QT has dealt with a lot of injuries all these wide receivers have dealt with injuries outside of DeAndre Hopkins of course but Kenny Stills has a prime opportunity here he played the second most snaps in week 7 59 snaps ran the second most routes among the Texans wide receivers behind only DeAndre Hopkins he had 40 routes ran and going up against the Oakland Raiders, we just saw what the Green Bay Packers did against this Oakland Raiders secondary yesterday. 11 catches for 262 yards and three touchdowns on the season. The Oakland Raiders are allowing the seventh most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. We know that the Houston Texans are going to have explosive plays every single game between their wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. Their tight ends are making plays now, but they're going to take shots down the field. And if Will Fuller is not good to go, then Kenny Stills is going to step in. He's going to play the snaps. He's going to see the targets. And it's a really, really good matchup. If Fuller is out, I think Kenny Stills is a high-end wide receiver three this week, Greg. I agree. Deshaun Watson's rolling right along. Even in this loss to Indianapolis, Watson was able to get the offense rolling. Stills is a major part of it. He Watson always uses utilizes a deep threat. That's going to be Kenny Stills this week. I think there's a lot to love here. Let's move on to the toughest position in fantasy sports, and that is the tight end spot where we haven't been able to find a streaming tight end that we can rely on. Now we turn our attention to Jacob Hollister. The Seahawks lost Will Disley just a week ago, and we everybody thought it would be Luke Wilson stepping up. It wasn't. It was Hollister, Frankie. Yeah, you wouldn't know it just looking at the box score because Jacob Hollister only had three catches for 20 yards, but he did see a season-high 37 offensive snaps. He saw six targets as well. He played more snaps than Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson wasn't even targeted in this game, and... That's pretty much right in line what we were expecting. Luke Wilson, more of a blocking tight end. Jacob Hollister, we've heard his name bounce around a little bit for a while. He was with the New England Patriots for a little bit in the past. But now getting an opportunity with Will Disley going down, it's just really unfortunate because it looked like Will Disley was really going to have that breakout season this year. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks were talking up Will Disley. But now there is an opportunity for Jacob Hollister based on these six targets that he just saw in Week 7 against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and going up against the Atlanta Falcons in week eight, Greg, they've allowed four touchdowns to tight ends over their last three games. And they just allowed Gerald Everett to go off for four catches, 50 yards and a touchdown. So it's a pretty good matchup. This Atlanta Falcons defense, the entire Atlanta Falcons team is just depleted right now. Their spirits are down. Looks like Dan Quinn's likely going to get fired sooner rather than later. I, I think that 
Luke Wilson is in a good spot here going up against this Falcons defense, and I think he makes the most of his opportunity here. It's a really good matchup for Jacob Hollister, and if you're desperate, hey, why not? There's no clear-cut options out there. Hollister may have some opportunities from Russell Wilson. We'll see. But if you don't like Hollister, there are other directions to go in, and that brings me to the Minnesota Vikings. They play in a short week this week as they face off against the Washington football team on Thursday Night Football, and they are expected to be without Adam Thielen, who hurt his hamstring early in this contest on Sunday while scoring a touchdown, of course. So you can look at some wide receivers potentially to pick up, but you can also look at both Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. Both of these guys saw six targets yesterday. Both had similar lines, but it was Rudolph catching a touchdown. What do you think about these options, Frank? And if you had to choose one, which one would you choose? First and foremost, this is contingent on whether or not Adam Thielen can go, but the early diagnosis does not look good dealing with an injury and playing on the short week, as you mentioned, on Thursday night football. And Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith both saw six targets. As you mentioned, they combined for 10 receptions, 118 yards. Kyle Rudolph had the touchdown as well. If I had to choose one for this spot, I would probably choose Kyle Rudolph. I think Irv Smith long-term does have more value, definitely, you know, in dynasty leagues and in keeper leagues. They drafted him in the second round out of Alabama this past year for a reason. There's a lot of upside with Irv Smith, but Kyle Rudolph is still playing more snaps. He's still running more routes. They're taking away from each other right now, but I think, you know, if there was any indication this past week, if Adam Thielen is out, they're going to spread the ball around a little bit. Obviously, Stephon Diggs is going to get his, but they're going to use both tight ends. They're going to use BC Johnson as well, but the fact that Kyle Rudolph is playing more snaps and running more routes consistently did have the touchdown this past week as well. I would lean with Kyle Rudolph, but again, I think long-term, the upside for Irv Smith is huge, but this Washington defense is not a good one. The Minnesota Vikings are big favorites here. If I had to choose one of these guys, I would lean with Kyle Rudolph. Last year, it was all about Kyle Rudolph, the old tight end, because Kirk Cousins loves his tight end. Last year, he didn't love Rudolph. Right now, with Adam Thielen potentially out on Thursday, maybe we'll get that sweet revenge just a year later. Last position to talk about this week, Frank, brings us to our streaming defense of the week. You called Kansas City last week, and it was awesome. On Thursday Night Football, the Kansas City defense dominated Denver and Joe Flacco. Let's do it again, bud. Who do you like? Yeah, hopefully we could keep this rolling here, Greg. It's the Detroit Lions going up against your New York Giants. It's really just be based on how Daniel Jones has played so far. You know, since he's taken over, he has had seven interceptions and four fumbles lost in five games. This past week, in week seven, going up against the Arizona Cardinals, you don't really think of the Cardinals as one of the better pass rushes in the league. They had eight sacks against Daniel Jones and against this New York Giants offensive line. So I think the Detroit Lions are going to be in play here. They could get some sacks. They could force some turnovers. It seems like Daniel Jones has been careless with the football as well. And the New York Giants are seven-point dogs in this game traveling to face the Detroit Lions. So I think they could be playing from behind, which means there's going to be more dropbacks. There's going to be more pass attempts, which leads to more opportunity for sacks and for turnovers. Uh, if if they're out there, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers as well, obviously going up against the Miami Dolphins. But if they're not, look at the Detroit Lions going up against your New York Giants and Daniel Jones. Greg, what have you seen from Daniel Jones so far? The ball security just hasn't been there. I think there's a lot of talent there, but certainly ball security is a major, major issue. He holds the ball for a little bit too long, and he when he gets hit, the ball seems to be the first thing flying out there. Daniel Jones is going to have to improve. It's going to be tough this week. It's a really solid Lions defense. That's going to do it for us here on the Fan Duel. Hurry up, Frank. It's been a blast. Good luck this week on your waiver wire. Thanks, Greg. Good luck to you as well. And hopefully we find out earlier rather than later that David Johnson is ruled out. Both David Johnson and Carry On Johnson. The Johnson brothers. We need that info. And hopefully it comes soon. Tomorrow on the program, J.J. Zacharyson joins me. And we'll tell you who to buy and who to sell. Have a great night. Enjoy Monday Night Football. And we'll see you tomorrow.